Hey, hello everyone. <clears throat> Girl Mechanic, how you doing? RR Showtime, how you doing? Uh, just a quick sound check. Is it coming in okay for you guys? Social Silver, hello from SoCal. First time I think I've seen your name here. Welcome aboard. XMDBD, how you doing? Just add Silver. How you doing? I'll get started in just a minute. Uh, Mason Tricks and the Frog. <laughs> Absolutely absolutely uh full name how's it going okay sounds good thanks thank you for the feedback uh, we'll get started in about a minute or less jeff 702 how you doing joseph b how you doing roger perner how you doing from australia good day uh geez quite a few new names um thank you all for for being here and again welcome aboard get started in in just a bit butchie harding thank you thank you trevor points yes you get a hi how you doing trevor gary d how you doing okay so with that we'll go ahead and uh we'll get started Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV, and this is your our, our live stream, and I'm your host, Patrick Vieira, and again, thank you guys for being here, really do appreciate it, and um, gotta thank you guys, we finally went over that 20,000 subscriber mark, so thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that, and um, Gee, our last uh, interview with Gerald Salente, a lot of comments there, huh? a lot of thumbs up. We appreciate it. A lot of comments. Uh, some comments, they do make you think and other comments kind of make you go, what the heck is this person thinking? But hey, everybody has their own opinion, right? So again, we do appreciate that. And again, as always, if you are new to this channel or you have not already done so, please do subscribe. Click on the bell to be notified of new updates and Give us a thumbs up if you like what we do. We really do appreciate your support and it keeps us going. So again, really do appreciate that. And as always, you can find us on various platforms of social media. Uh, our website, www.silverbullion.com.sg. As always, once again, because we are in Singapore. Silver Bullion SG on Facebook. Twitter, Silver Bullion PL, PL for Private Limited, not for Pluto. Okay. And... Uh, the audio versions, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, SBTV iTunes or SBTV Spotify. And again, if you have the app on your mobile phone or even on, on your desktop, the Telegram app, I hope you do join us there. Uh, look for Crisis Tracker where we go over things that are making news as far as gold, silver, uh, financial economics, things like that. So it's always um, it's always pretty interesting what, what we have there for you guys. So again... Thank you all for being here. Uh, quick check in. Christy Fernando, how you doing? James Richter, how's it going? Mason Tracks, glad you could make it. Again, Jeff702, XMDBD. He was intense. Actually, he was more mild <laughs> this time around. I, I was, after the interview was done, I, I, I asked him, I said, Gerald, are, are you okay? And he's like, I'm fine. I said, yeah, you, you um, you didn't blow up too much. So I was kind of wondering if things were okay. And <clears throat> afterwards, I kind of realized, did, did you just tell Gerald that? I mean, you know, like you were expecting him to give a few, uh, drop a few bombs or something. But um, he's a good guy. Gerald is, is, is always a good guy. Um, so, yeah, Salente, he was kind of intense. Uh, Lost in Asia, hello from Cebu. Como esta? How are you doing? Uh, let's see. RR, never seen him in an interview not to bring the heat. Yeah, that exactly. That's what I was kind of wondering. I said, hey, man, is, is Gerald okay or what? He's he's pretty tame. In fact, if you kind of go back the last few interviews, he's been pretty tame. So, Gerald, if you try to go a bit easier on things, you know, good job. Congratulations. Kudos to you. And I uh, hope you can keep it up. We're rooting for you, my man. Uh, let's see, Alejandro, hey, Alejandro, thank you, appreciate that, keep stacking boys and girls, absolutely, I think now, probably more than ever, um, it is a time, for sure, it's a time to stack, um, 
you know, we, we've seen some pretty crazy things going on, especially coming out of the CFTC. You can believe that. Asking uh, people to be aware of, of people trying to uh, um, push gold or precious metals. And isn't the CFTC supposed to be on guard, watching sure there's no manipulation, or making sure there's no manipulation in the markets, and then yet they're tweeting something like that? So kind of strange. If you haven't seen it, uh, just go ahead and look at the CFTC Twitter feed, and and um, it's pretty crazy what they had to say. Uh, let's see, Chris Fernando, the F-bomb he dropped was kind of funny. He's, yeah, that that was that that was a minor <laughs> minor one. Usually it's a bit more nuclear. Um, it's the end of the world <laughs> as we know it. Uh, we'll get through it. We'll, we'll all get through it. You guys are a smart bunch. We're, we're definitely going to get through it. So having said that, let's quickly go ahead and take a look at the silver and gold price and see what's going on. This is from our website, silverbullion.com.sg. So let me make sure this is set towards uh, USD so we can all get a good uh, base of where things are at. And what we're seeing is silver getting a bump i'm sure it'll get back to that 17 and then push on through 18 range gold 1596 it'll they'll, they'll all get back to that that range is where where they were gold should get back to 16 16 25 50 should be should be okay shouldn't be a too much of a problem especially 16 25 silver um it should hit 17 sometime today i'm pretty pretty confident with that should get back into into that range um social silver uh thank you is the fed coming to the rescue tomorrow yeah they are coming to the rescue uh if they don't come to the rescue tomorrow they themselves are going to have to be rescued because trump is gonna have a fit and i don't think the markets can take it if they don't step in and give some forward guidance and Forward guidance and things like that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today, where the Fed seems to, they're the Fed octopus, you know, they're, they're in everything, tentacles and everything. And it's what they're doing, you know, we're going to take a look at, you know, is it still within their mandate to, to do all of these types of things? So we'll, we'll get into that in just a bit. Uh, Fed won't end. They won't. Um, they, they won't. Let's see. Uh, we had a better idea. It's called the U.S. Treasury Mason tricks. Um, absolutely. Uh, there were times when it was just the Treasury and government was doing okay. You know, I mean, it, it kind of goes both ways. But, you know, I, I think uh, for the better times that the U.S. had anyway, it, it was times when uh, there was no central bank. So I'd have to agree with you there. Uh, RR, Worldwide Rescue Effort tomorrow. I... I'm with you there. I mean, um, man, the lifeboats. <laughs> I think these guys are really going to um, 25 basis point. I, I think guys are looking more at 50 at this point. But we'll, we'll see. You know, the Fed has been pretty conservative and Jerome Powell has been pretty uh, wishy-washy. Um, and that's probably one of the best compliments he's, he's going to get, wishy-washy. I think most of us are going to agree to that. Um, Anyway, so there we are with the silver gold price. I just want to take a look, a quick look at the Twitter feed, see what's going on there, bookmark a few items. Uh, just want to see what's going on. Lawrence Lepard, he's pretty good to, to, to listen to every now and then. Well, every time I should say. Gold fails to shine again, putting Haven reputation on the line after getting caught up in last week's punishing virus-driven sell-off. That hit everything from equities to commodities, traditional haven, da 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 da. Um, propaganda. I think he goes on to say propaganda in his feed. And, you know, geez, news is just really getting to be that way. Peak Prosperity, Chris Martinson, he's doing some incredible work. Um, if you haven't watched his videos yet on the coronavirus, I, I suggest you do so. Uh, but he tweets out, but honestly, who could have seen this coming? Uh, tweet is unavailable, so let's just take a quick look what it was about. Uh, geez, I guess people, a lot of places are getting hit right now. Um, let's see, people should improve their immune systems rather than buying masks. Well, I, I agree with that, you should, but I think, you know, you need the 
<clears throat> things that are going to protect you first. So maybe that, that mask should be a, a supplement to the immune system. So I, I guess what Tavi is talking about here is, is really supplies just really being wiped off. And again, that lends into the concern about the whole supply chain issue. Uh, so let's see what else. Uh, TF Meadows, Turd Ferguson. Oh my gosh, could this be? Negative U.S. yields are in sight as virus spurs recession bets. The swirl of fresh coronavirus cases and signs of the severity of the hit on the global economy have seasoned strategists warning that U.S. and I have to save my three free Bloomberg articles per month, so I'll end it there. But I guess they are looking at negative U.S. yields. And again, this is something we've talked about before. Brad Houston, he's pretty good to follow. Also, if you don't have him on your Twitter feed, give him a follow. The dual mandate is now a singular one. Pump stocks. And Brad, thank you for tweeting that out because, again, we are surely going to get into that. Uh, let's see. The Fed's Economist released an article. This one, they released an article February 27th. Uh, you really got to read it. It's pretty long, um, definitely long. But if you have time, go go ahead and uh, take a look at that article. It's pretty interesting there. Harold Malmgren, who we played a couple clips on last week, says, however cautious I may be about gold right now, watching central banks and some sources of mega wealth increasing their demand for gold, my thinking evolving Shortage of dollars to continue to grow, generating demand for alternative liquid assets. Gold will be at the core. Uh, he goes on to say, I have said in the past that gold may suffer decline in the early stages of market sell-off. This is what we saw back in 2007-2008. As asset holders sell what they can to close margins, or to close, to close margins, sorry, unable to sell what they wish and and a lot of speculation is this is what happened to gold uh they had to close margins most collateral will be crushed in a downslide into markets and many sellers and few buyers um kitco is friday's plunging gold over or does the precious metals have more to lose what do you guys think where, where should we click here it's over gold's going up Gold will go sideways or gold will keep falling. Where do we click? Go ahead and uh, make your choice. Is it over? Going sideways or will it keep falling? What What say you? What do you guys say? What do you folks say? I will wait for the first three and then I will take one of them. Sideways. Okay, so we got one sideways. Is it over? Gold's going up sideways, or will it keep falling? Faith says it's going sideways, over, falling, not over, up. <laughs> okay, you guys, you guys, you guys got me there. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's going to go up. Um, I'm going to say it's, go, it's going to go up because if, if all these positions are, are closed now, um, I think we're going to see gold back or gold going back to what it does. And there we go. Uh, most of the people think gold is going to go up. So again, uh, that's, that's a pretty good poll that, that Kitco put out and, um, Goldman Sachs interest rate reduction of 75 basis points. will well, between March and June, we'll see how that one goes. And, um, let me just take a look at a cup more couple more there will come a time when central bank action won't be enough to patch the cracks in the stock market from nomi prince who we have been trying to get an interview with um she's right there uh srs rocco he believes 30 dollar oil is coming and um this is the article from or the tweet from cftc i'll, I'll end the, the tweet stream here where they say Watch out for people trying to take advantage of the impact of coronavirus on the market by touting the benefits of gold or other precious metals. I think 99.9% .9 of us are going to tweet back to the CFTC. Watch out for big banks uh, trying to take advantage of the silver market with price manipulation. So that's the 
few of the tweets that I've come across. And um, I tell you what, that last one from CFTC, it, it's, uh, I don't know. I, what what can you say about that one? Things happening right under their nose and really with gold and silver. And they are telling us to uh, watch out for people trying to take advantage. Maybe they need to uh, take a look in the mirror there. You guys need to see what's going on right under your own noses. Okay. Let's take a quick look again at some of these questions and whatnot. Um, let's see. Sideways for a while, then up. Uh, more from Paul Hunt. Um, let's see. Jai, reduce CO2 emissions by July. In July, by 30%, get the air conditioner going. How fragile we become. I'm not sure what, what that's about. But anyway, um, wishful thinking wins. Uh, let's see. LC, with gold at Tier 1 asset. Since 2012, and central banks gobbling up gold since 2012. They're, they've been especially gobbling it up last last year. Do you think gold will be further depressed, or now that banks bought up last eight years increase? I, I think the banks are going to continue buying. Um, I, I think they have to. Um, I, I think with the increase, I, I think gold will increase. I, I think the market had a good washing where these guys, you know, had to um. Go ahead and and I guess get some capital to 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 uh, take care of their margins and and so we've seen that get flushed out. So hopefully now we we will see um gold start to increase a bit. Hopefully we'll see silver start to increase a bit. I think we're at about a ninety five ninety five ratio right now still uh, on the uh, silver gold ratio. So that that that's something um. You know it, it's definitely screaming right now to to be buying silver if you're stuck. You know, trying to decide between the two metals, uh, which one to buy. Uh, let's see. Stocks down, then up, then down cat bounce. Well, we'll see. Dead cat bounce, maybe we'll see. Uh, let's see. Take a few more of these. Uh, the greatest depression has begun. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's begun. You know, it, it's it's been happening, but you know, with the central bank involvement they've um been trying to push back the inevitable and um you know the the concerning part for me is you know they they have the saying never let a um a crisis go to waste or never let an opportunity go, whatever it is something along those lines uh we got to be careful you know this be careful for ourselves and with our, our health of course with the virus going around um we don't need to really you know panic about it but of course just take care of yourself and whatnot but you know, alongside running parallel to that, we need to keep an eye on on the Fed and central banks and and governments right now because you you don't want them to take advantage of an already fragile situation. So we really need to uh, keep an eye on what they're doing and and um, hold them to account if if need be. Um, so anyway, one of the things going on that I can show you is um, what's going on in Hong Kong. And I think this is even going to be going on in Italy and maybe even a few other places where you guys may have heard of this, but the budget, Hong Kong budget to hit record deficit of $139 billion with relief measures of 10000 per individual and full loan backing for small firms. In other words, Hong Kong is... They're going to be implementing a little bit of what that so-called helicopter money is or vouchers, however they plan to do it. But all adult permanent residents. Okay, that's strange. All adult permanent residents in Hong Kong to receive the payment plus a 700 million Hong Kong dollar boost for tourism hit by coronavirus and protest. Well, that's interesting. Government spending forecast to outstrip revenue. By 139 billion Hong Kong dollars in 20 to 21, deficit predicted for six years in a row. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, tip of the iceberg, I think we're going to see more and more uh, countries having to do this, this type of a thing. So, again, keep an eye on it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's bad enough we already have the virus where we need to take care of ourselves and, and our families. And 
not to a point where we need to panic, but then again, we need to keep an eye on things running parallel with, with the virus. What are the central banks going to do? What, what are governments going to do? Um, how are people going to either make us become more fearful? How are people going to try and let us calm down a bit? Because the, you're going to see all these dynamics come into play. Somebody's going to be right. Somebody's going to be wrong. But I think all of that has to take a backseat compared to just taking care of yourself right now, taking care of yourself, taking care of your, your family and whatnot, your, your coworkers, employees, whatever it is, got to take care of each other first. We're all in this boat together. And then we can address these other things that, that are going on. So that was coming in from Hong Kong and, um, some of couple announcements who's coming up interviews we got dr mark faber gloom doom and boom report and then we're going to have i believe steve st angelo from srs rocco report and then we're going to have sorry my man jan newenhouse i know i just killed his name um i'm sorry Kuz johnson he's otherwise known as as Kuz johnson he made a big uh big name for himself when he was doing some blogging a few years back and now he's back out in the spotlight again and he's been doing some great work so looking forward to to uh, having that interview uh, so again be sure to subscribe click on that bell and let us know who else you you'd like to see and take a look at a few more comments here um albert engels gerald is too old to be running his mouth he ain't right he needs to be <laughs> now nah, gerald I, I you know he's someone you just really got to um you got to understand a bit, you know, he's granted. You're not going to agree with 100% of the things he says. I, I don't, you know, that that's, that's for sure. You know, no one really is going to agree 100% with everything everyone has to say. So, I mean, you know, with Gerald, he, he sprinkles that seasoning here and there. And then some bits are absolutely going to taste wonderful. Some bits, you know, not nah, don't agree with it, but you know, he's, he's a, He's been around. He he knows he knows the world. You know, it's that's what he does. So, you know, Gerald, he's gotta love that guy. You know, you really gotta gotta love that guy. Uh, let's see. Santa Muerte. Nobody is selling silver. It's just the paper markets. Uh, you know, last week what we did see in the shop was uh movement both ways. Guys were selling, guys were buying. Guys were selling, guys were buying, guys were buying, guys were selling. So we did see it move move both ways. Um I, I I honestly, I didn't expect that. I, I thought we would just see more buying, um, but we did see selling also. So that that was a bit of a surprise. And, and then, you know, we've we've had guys, I was reading the comments and some guys were upset because, you know, they've been, they've had silver gold for such a long time and it's done nothing for them, you know, and this and that and this and that. Well, I mean, you know, I, I kind of look at it this way. If you are vaulting it, storing it someplace yeah it's it just sat there all it did was was sit there whereas you know i i mean i'll just say it a, a company like us with silver bullion when you vault things you can go ahead and use that gold and silver as collateral to go ahead and buy more you know especially now when when the price went down you can use it to buy more gold and silver you can use it to to do whatever you want i mean if you're into crypto you can Use that to go ahead and get yourself some crypto, whatever you want to do with it. You know, I mean, it's the main thing is when you store with us, your assets are still alive. You know, a lot of times when you put your things in a vault somewhere else, that's it. Your assets, your gold and silver go in the dark, collects dust, just stays there. With us, the light is always on it. It's never going to get dusty, meaning you can still redeploy those assets and use it as collateral to go ahead and, and reinvest. So, there's a big difference, especially when it comes to where you're going to store, what your vault provider is is doing for you. A um, few more, uh, few more comments here. Yeah, Gerald's passionate. He's he's a good guy. You know, he's passionate for sure. Uh, ride the curve. Would I consider myself a gold bug? No, I I'm, I'm more into silver. Um, that I don't I don't know. Maybe it's just in my my DNA or something, but I, I do like silver. Um, as I got to learn more about the metal, it, it, you know, you come across things like silver to gold ratio 
uh, then you realize, hey, okay, you know, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. You come across things like, um, you know, it was money and it was money more than gold was even money. And then again, it starts to reaffirm, you know, your, your, your conviction in silver. And, you know, I mean, I'll be honest, I've never looked at silver as, um, I never bought it 100% for investment purposes. I've always been in silver because, you know, like a lot of you, one day you wake up and you realize something's wrong with this, this monetary system. You know, something's definitely, definitely wrong. And um, for the most part, that's always the position that, that I've saw. Um, and then you, you go and you research it more. And you realize, you know, like I said, you, you realize you're doing the right thing. And, of course, you come across the ups and downs and ups and downs. And then, you know, you, you wonder a bit. But when silver goes down, you feel a bit bad. Then when it goes up, you say, oh, my gosh, I better go and get some more. And you find yourself on this roller coaster. And then sometimes just you got to put that away. Just put it away and just realize why are you buying it? Why are you buying silver? Why are you buying gold? Why are you buying anything for that matter? So, you know, a gold bug? No, but definitely uh, between the two metals, it's it's silver for, for sure. For sure. Appreciate the, the question. Um, let's see. Uh I I lick silver every day. Okay. Uh silver's an anti microbial. This is why it was money and will stay money, Ben C. Yeah, you know, not not to forget the the properties that, that silver has and um you know, I know silver did take a hit and, and I guess you, you have to consider okay, it is an industrial metal and um companies they are not in the business of warehousing silver, meaning a lot of times their inventories uh, for raw materials is just in time, JIT type of a, a supply chain. So they, they'll buy it as they need it. And with supply chain slowing down, with you know economies slowing down and whatnot, uh, there could be possibly an excess of silver. I'm not, I'm not hearing anything, but again, these companies... You know, I don't believe Apple is in the business of storing or warehousing silver. I don't think Samsung is in the business of warehousing silver. So all these companies, electronics companies that put silver in their components, I don't think they're in the business of warehousing silver. And, and even their, uh, their, their suppliers might not be probably not in the business of warehousing silver. They take it as they need it. So that could be a reason why, you know, silver went down, maybe just a little bit of excess with the supply, I mean, the concern of supply chains and whatnot. At least that's, that's my reasoning as I, I try to, as I try to look through it. Uh, let's see. Silver is awesome. I look on <laughs> when, when I was eight. Okay. All right. All right. Right. The curve. Thanks. Thanks for the compliment. I, I gotta let you go ahead and, um, relay that message to to my wife now she's all in also but you know that's another point you got to get your spouse to understand uh get your family to understand what what you're doing if, if you can get them to understand what you're doing you're going to have that support from your your family members so um try and include them you know let them know what what you know i'm not saying to put fear in them or anything but um I, i've seen it over and over and over again where if the spouse knows and she understands or he understands, then it becomes an easier thing to, to do the things that you need to do to protect and provide. So always, always get your spouse, get your spouse on board. Um, so having said that, today's topic, you know, with all the things going on in the world, and as we saw, you know, Hong Kong, helicopter money, you know, we were seeing, you know, the question that you guys had, what's going to happen with the markets, what the Fed you know, what are they going to say? All these things going on in the world. What's the Fed's role? I mean, what's their mandate? What's their purpose? And are they overreaching? Have they essentially become unrecognizable from being that lender of last resort? Or will the Fed become unrecognizable? Meaning, have they already become unrecognizable from their mandates? Or will they become unrecognizable from from their mandates so um those are a couple of questions i want to throw at you and what exactly is the fed mandate i think most of you guys are familiar with this we know the fed as 
the entity that is supposed to be the lender of last resort. And from the Fed page itself, what are the Federal Reserve's objectives in conducting monetary policy? The objectives as mandated by Congress in the Federal Reserve Act are promoting maximum employment, which means all Americans that want to work are gainfully employed and stable prices for the goods and services we all purchase. In this way, the Fed's monetary policy decisions truly affect the financial lives of all Americans, not just the spending decisions we make as consumers, but also the spending decisions of businesses about what they produce, how many workers they employ, and what investments they make in their operations. And all this really came about, you know, we hear this word sometimes, Humphrey Hawkins, Humphrey Hawkins, Humphrey Hawkins. So all this really came about because of the Humphrey Hawkins Full Employment Act. And what it is, the Full Employment and Balanced Growth Act, known as the Humphrey Hawkins Full Employment Act. This is what it's meant to be or the intention. Unemployment and inflation levels began to rise in the early 70s. A lot of us remember that time. Reviving fears of an economic recession. In the past, the country's economic policy had been defined by the Employment Act of 1946, which encouraged the federal government to pursue maximum employment production and purchasing power by cooperation with private enterprise. Some representatives dissatisfied with the vague wording of this act sought to create an amendment that would strengthen and clarify the country's economic, economic policy. Goes on to say, I'll just read up to here. In response to rising unemployment levels in the 70s, Representative Augustus Hawkins and Senator Hubert Humphrey created the Full Employment and Balanced Growth Act. It was signed into law by President Jimmy Carter on October 27, 1978, and codified as 15 United States Code 3101. So let's take a look at this because the Fed, they do seem to be in every aspect of the markets from stocks to bonds to interest rates to just about everything under the sun, including forward guidance, which we are going to hear in we're going to hear in a few days more forward guidance. They become the fit octopus. Don't know what else to, to call them already at this point. Well, actually I do, but this is a public show, so we'll just say fit octopus. Um but you know really has it got to a point where in calling a spade a spade, has it gotten to a point where the Fed just simply has meddled too much in the markets. And I'm going to start off by reading from an interview titled The Federal Reserve Board Oral History Project. Now, what this was was when the Fed made 100 in years, 100, <clears throat> excuse me, when the Fed made 100 years, they had this uh, oral history project. They interviewed uh, people from, from the Fed, past uh, Fed heads and whatnot, and they just went over some history. And what was interesting was, they had a section on the Hunt brothers. And I found this pretty interesting. Why, why would that be such an important part of the of 100 years of Fed history, the Hunt brothers? And even more so, why did the Fed even get involved with the Hunt brothers? So I'm, I'm going to stay on that part as, as we look through it. <clears throat> and some of the people, excuse me, were Stephen or Stephen Shimmering, former Deputy Director, Division of Banking Supervision Regulation, we're going to take a look at John Ryan, former director, Division of Banking Supervision and Regulation. Then we have Frederick Struble, former associate director, Division of Banking Supervision and Regulation, and former deputy associate director, Division of Research and Statistics. And then we're going to take a look at Paul Volcker, former chairman, Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. So we're going to take a look at what all of these guys had to say. Uh, it, it's, it's short. It's not really too long. And each of these interviews shows something very interesting as to what former Fed key players had to say about, as mentioned, the Hunt brothers and the Fed's reach or overreach. So we'll start with uh, Stefan, Stefan, Stefan Shimmering, former deputy director. Let me put the link here for you guys if you, if you want to read his full interview. 
on on your own. Uh, hang on, let's let me just get that here for you guys. <clears throat> Oops. Okay. So Stefan Shimmering, he says the Hunt brothers were ultimately able to orderly liquidate their silver position. The interviewer, Miss Carter, was the Federal Reserve's entree, or partially because of the financial institutions it supervised. Shimmering says there was a lot of specific market concern because the shorts, as I call them, happened to be some large investment banks that had commercial bank relationships. There were also broader market concerns that a silver futures market collapse would adversely affect other commodity markets and their participants. That is why I believe the Federal Reserve got involved to address these concerns. Another interviewer, Mr. Martinson, that was an unusual, that was an unusual involvement, Mr. Shimmering, it was. It was because if I recall, we didn't have any exposure at the state member banks we supervised. A lot of the exposure was mostly in the investment banks and some market makers in Chicago. So it was very unusual that we got involved. Another Fed official, John Ryan. Let me just copy his link here. And I'll throw it here if you guys want to see what he had to say in his in, in entirety. He says, the first we knew about the Hunt Brothers silver crisis was when I got to work one day and early in the morning I got a call from Chairman Volcker's secretary who always said he wants you. I went to the chairman's office and there were a group of people in his office already, Mike Bradfield and others, and it turned out that the people we were meeting with were the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, the CFTC, senior staff, their lawyer, and Engelhard. Minerals and Chemicals Corp. Nice to have friends in high places, right? Which was a big commodities broker. The CFTC representative explained that the Hunt brothers had millions of dollars in futures contracts on silver outstanding. There had been a huge margin call and the Hunts could not meet it. The CFTC was concerned that a default of that magnitude could disrupt the entire commodities market. They asked for help and suggested that the Fed should get involved and work to solve the problem. It goes on to say, my personal belief is that the experience with the Hunt silver crisis heightened Chairman Volcker's concern about the present rate of inflation and its effect on the value of the dollar. I believe he was thinking that when our businesses lose faith in our currency, it will have dire consequences or the money. Third guy we want to take a quick look at was Frederick M. Struble. Struble. Let me put his link for you guys if you want to go ahead and take a look at his full article in context. The interviewer, Mr. Martinson, says some thought the Fed's involvement in the silver crisis was odd. Do you have any recollection why the Fed was involved? Struble says, well, it was potentially a destabilizing financial development. Paul Volcker was the Fed chairman, and the Fed generally gets involved in damn near anything that comes along that touches on finance. The Fed octopus was there a long, long time ago. I think Volcker and the Treasury Secretary thought the Fed should look into it and be very much involved in it, and we were. Interviewer says once the powers that be intervened they turned the market around on the hunts are you getting that they turned the market around on the hunts struble or struble sorry it was the silver bubble but remember it was a gold bubble too gold was going up like mad in price but it wasn't a concentration of activities by any one or two people like the hunts were involved in and lastly, I want to take a look at take a look at Paul Volcker. Um, he played a heavy role in it. Let me just get to the page where he's at. Okay, and just let me pass this link to you guys if you want to read it in its entirety. So I tell you what, this it's really interesting because these guys talk about their 
the 100 year history at the Fed and you really get a good insight as to what's really going on. Um, okay, so I'll go down to the Hunt Brothers and the Silver Crisis. The interviewer, Mr. Small, what was the board's involvement in the Silver Crisis? Uh, in the Silver Crisis involving the Hunt Brothers. Mr. Volker, Jerry Corrigan wrote a long report about this at some point. The basic story was simple enough. There had been a big run-up in the prices of silver and gold. The price of silver went from $5 to $50 an ounce. One day, I was in a board meeting. I got a call. I got a call that I needed to talk to so and so in the market. Got to find out who so and so is. So I did. And the person on the other end said that I had to do something. Like I said, good to have friends in high places, right? And Mr. Volker said, I had to close the silver market because Bach from Bach Halsey Stewart Shields was going to go broke. So this is Paul Volker. I had to close the silver market. Somebody was going to go broke. Bach was probably then the second biggest brokerage firm. It was never considered a first rank firm. Never considered a first rank firm, but it was big. So here we go. Too big to fail was from way back then. Bach had been the principal banker for Bunker Hunt. Bach had all these loans secured by silver. As the price of silver went down, the margins were lost. And Bach was selling silver. If the silver price went down any further, Bach said the loans would not be covered. It would go broke. It would be a huge mess. Volker goes on to say, I consulted with the Treasury. I don't know where Miller was at that point. I'm not sure who Miller is. Um, sorry about that. I don't remember talking to him at all. We discussed the matter with Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, and I remember discussing it with CFTC Commodity Futures Trading Commission. It was presumably regulated this part of the market. I called the CFTC and asked for statistics and who knew about all these positions of silver? I was told that it was all confidential information. None of your business. Mr. Volker laughs. This was a strong-headed chairman of the CFTC. It was a peculiar organization at the time. They had a couple of really conservative guys on the board. Anyway, after much discussion, we decided to do nothing we weren't in charge of the silver market anyway, and Treasury decided not to do anything. So we didn't ask for the market to be closed the next day. The price is stabilized, and Bach managed to get out of the rest of the position of that day. But many others, including Merrill Lynch, were exposed. First National Bank of Chicago was exposed, so it was still a problem. Volker goes on to say, I don't remember what we did right then, but the silver price did go down some more. Although some institutions were close to being in trouble, they escaped. Um, it's basically, basically what it says is you do have, you do have instances. Uh, I think we all know this already. We, we can't be naive about it. Friends in high places, you know, as just shown here, they're going to call the Fed, tell them, hey, you got to do something. And I guess sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. But with hearing what Volker had to say, you know, they, um, they're involved What all the rest of the, these fed guys said they got involved with, um, with the hunts, with the economies too big to fail was from back then. And, you know, this guy, the fed octopus, he was created probably even earlier than that. And this whole thing, this fed octopus, when we look at the bottom of it, we see the Aldrich plan. And to find out who Aldrich is, we'll take a look at our sometimes trusted Wikipedia. He was an American politician and the leader of the Republican Party in the United States Senate. Uh, he served for a while. He was one of the big four key Republicans. And da -da 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 -da, because of his impact on national politics and central position on the pivotal Senate Finance Committee, he was referred to by the press and public alike as the General manager, general manager of the nation, dominating tariff and monetary policy in the first decade of the 20th century. 
I'll go down a bit because it gets pretty interesting here. I'm not going to stay too long on this, but he was involved in a lot of things, uh, progressive and reformers, however, denounced him as representative of the evils of big business. His daughter, Abigail, married into the Rockefeller family and his descendants included namesake Nelson Rockefeller became powerful figures in American politics and banking. So again, that fed octopus, you know, it, it's from way back from the very, you could say from the very, very beginning. So I want to take a look at the, some of your, your questions and comments be, before we move on. Um, let's see. Food is most under, <laughs> okay. A pig long-term capital rr 97 yeah you know again these things were were happening for for quite a while uh palladium is scary it can crash due to the automotive market crashing yeah you know with, with palladium i i gotta ask you know i mean it, it makes me wonder you know guys are saying you know palladium catalytic converters for cars and whatnot well i mean cars aren't being sold cars aren't being made and as you know it gradually moves over to electric I think you're going to be seeing less palladium being used, right? I mean, just my opinion. But um, palladium is scary. You know, it's it's scary to the upside, scary to to the downside, as as you said. So I'd I'd agree with you there. Fundamentally, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing what what the the whole rise is in palladium right now, except if guys just are speculating because, like I said, if one of its bigger uses are for um catalytic converters, I don't think we're going to see the demand for catalytic converters grow, if anything, I think we're going to see it lessen. But nonetheless, palladium seems to be doing uh, seems to be doing pretty well. Um, let's see. Uh, Hoster of Carcosa, good to see you. Yeah, I think the banks will pump the brakes on gold a bit, just enough for them to stack what they need. Yeah, you know, you can't, uh, you can't discount that, uh, you know, you just can't discount that. So, you know, there's some truth in that for sure. Uh, let's see. Do you think JPM will lose? Paul Garten, do you think JPM will lose the ability to manipulate silver as their derivative exposure explodes? Um, I think one thing that could, could uh, shake up silver prices, you know, again, as as we were talking about in the earlier, if there is a so-called supply shock, and like I say, you know, companies are not in the business of warehousing their raw materials. You know, they, they're not going to warehouse all of these things to make their products. A lot of companies have just in time uh, inventories, including their raw materials and for what they need to, to create their products. So they're not going to be warehousing silver. Um, having said that, then you take a look at, uh, Silver, where I believe it's over 60% now that comes from secondary mines or secondary miners. You look at copper, copper, nickel, zinc. If these prices go down, um, you know, I, I think uh, what you're going to end up seeing is, I, I think, you know, silver is in a very precarious position right now because most of the mining comes from secondary miners. And if the price for copper, zinc, nickel continues to go down um where is that is it still cost effective for them to go after these metals and try and give it to suppliers when suppliers or give it to these people who who turn it over in, into the raw material that can be used the refiners they give it to these refiners but these refiners then they may start having a hard time selling that product to to the companies that that use the product because like i say if um consumption slows down if economy slow down then you may have a bit of excess and if you have a bit of that excess then you may see these metals um they go through the excess price goes down but then what ends up happening is there becomes a little bit of a you could say a little bit of a shortage in in the market um if that happens uh, we go back to 2014, I think, where we saw the paper price go down to low 14, high 13, I believe, somewhere around there. But the true physical price was a lot higher. You could not buy any silver 
anywhere close to that paper price. So I think if, if things continue and this supply shock continues, I think it's going to affect silver market, uh, especially silver market. And to a point where, you know, maybe, you know, because things aren't going around the globe, maybe we could, you know, start to see silver tightening up a bit. Uh, but I can tell you, I'm not seeing it now. You know, I, I'm not saying anything other than I don't see it now. But looking ahead, of course, if things get worse, you know, these things could start to unfold in, in that direction. So, you know, again, like I say, it's just something to, to keep an eye on. Um, you know, we've seen this before. Uh, we, you know, we, we just got to hope for the best. And for right now, the, the best thing you can be doing is, is taking care of yourself. Um, but good to have some gold, good to have some silver, of course, for, for sure. Anyway, that that's kind of just how how i see it nobody's told me anything okay so this is just my own opinion i'm not trying to give you any advice on on what to do it's just my opinion of, of what i'm looking at and if things were to unfold in in a certain direction okay so just just to be clear on that uh mark w when credit freeze is shipping will cease it that's exactly the point you know it's it's going to cease uh let's see RR, we are still too early in the collapse, but silver will break through the manipulation. I, I think it will. I think you're going to see that physical price break through the, the paper price um, if things continue the way they are and if supply chains start to start to break down. I think you, you may see silver start to separate from the paper price, the, the actual physical silver, meaning if, you, if that paper price says $15 an ounce, you, you're not going to be able to buy it at $15 an ounce. You may have to be buying it at $20, $21, $22 an ounce. So, you know, that's that's what I mean when, when I say this. You'll still be able to get it. It's just that you may have to, you might have to pay a bit more. Um, this is what we saw a few years back. So I'm just kind of wondering if it's, it's going to happen again. But again, it's just my opinion. You're absolutely free to think the opposite. I, I got no problem with that. In fact, I'm always open to knowing what you guys think because in the end we're all just trying to make the most sense we can so the more input we get the more knowledge we get the better decisions we, we can make so again don't, don't stress too too much on that okay um palladium stephen brown uh sucker bet no you know that that's a tough one um only because if like i say if you're looking at palladium because you, you see it as uh, the metal for catalytic converters. Um, I don't think, you know, there's going to be more catalytic converters that are going to be growing. If anything, I think they're going to be becoming a, a bit less. But market seems to like to speculate on it. So um, make your money. Make your money where you can, when you can. Okay. So um, so those were, were some things. And, and again, the Fed Octopus, you know, he's, he's all over the place definitely all over the place and um you got to ask yourself why and i came across this interview from alan greenspan i think it was last year that i, I want to uh, share with you guys the economy weakening potentially recession risks picking up alan how, how do you see the u.s outlook for the rest of the year it's it, strangely enough it's going to be it's going to depend in large part on the stock market uh, because we, we underestimate the wealth effect on the economy. And uh, in this type of volatile stock market moves, uh, it has an impact which I don't think we fully understand nor measure correctly. Excuse me. And so here we are. According to what Greenspan says, stock market cannot go down. And I guess we kind of get an insider's look as, as to why. Um, is there a name for this? Absolutely. It's called uh, monetary tools, forward guidance, keeping the punchable field uh, for the friends of the reserve as proof from what Volcker had to say in his uh, interview. And um, whatever you want to call it, is the Fed staying within its mandate when it comes to forward guidance or influencing the market? So again, just a reminder, what is the Fed mandate? We took a look at that earlier. Again, it's sorry, it's mandated by Congress and the Federal Reserve Act are promoting 
maximum employment, which means all Americans that want to work are gainfully employed and stable prices for the goods and services we all purchase. So that's the Fed's mandate. And um, again, are they sticking to, to that mandate? Do they have to stick to that mandate? Um, but don't forget, they are the lender of last resort. That's supposed to be one of their, their key, um, key uh, objectives or jobs anyway. But the Federal Reserve does have a variety of policy tools it uses in order to implement monetary policy. One of these things, open market operations, open market operations, OMOs, the purchase and sale of securities in the open market by a central bank. Discount rate, another tool. Discount rate is the interest rate charge to commercial banks and other depository institutions on loans they receive from the regional Federal Reserve Bank's lending facility, otherwise called the discount window. Another tool, reserve requirements. Reserve requirements are the amount of funds that a depository institution must hold in reserve against specified liabilities. Interest rate on required reserve balances and excess balances. Federal Reserve, and we went over this, the Federal Reserve banks pay interest on required reserve balances and on excess reserve balances. We, we kind of went over this before where the banks actually get interest on the money they park at the Fed. <laughs> you can believe that. They, they will leave it in the Fed. They're going to get interest. No risk. I mean, it, it's a low interest rate environment anyway, so just leave it with the Fed. Don't encounter any risk and collect interest on it because when you're sticking billions and billions in there, even a low interest rate is, is looking good. So it's kind of uh, crazy when you think about it, right? The Fed gives you money and you put the money back with the Fed and get interest on it. What about us, right? What What about you and me? Anyway, another tool, term deposit facility. Term deposits facilitate the implementation of monetary policy by providing providing an additional tool by which the Federal Reserve can manage the aggregate quantity of reserve balances held by depository institutions. Funds placed in term deposits are removed from the reserve accounts of participating institutions for the life of the term deposit and thereby drain reserve balances from the banking system. I guess they have their ins and, and their outs there, right? And you and I, <laughs> we're not even smelling any of it, right? So from Investopedia, the Fed's tools for influencing economies, I'll just touch just on this. They, they do explain it uh, a little bit better. In the U.S., the Federal Reserve exists to maintain a stable and growing economy through price stability, full employment. So we went over that. It's two legislated mandates. Historically, the Fed has done this by manipulating flat out in the open, manipulating short-term interest rates, Engaging in open market operations and adjusting reserve requirements, the Fed has also developed new tools to fight economic crisis, which emerged during the subprime crisis 2007. What are these tools and how do they help mitigate a recession? I'll, I'll just take a look at a few of them. Okay, so um, the first tool used by the Fed as well as central banks around the world is manipulation of short-term interest rates. Put simply, this practice involves raising, lowering interest rates to slow, spur economic activity and control inflation. Mechanics are pretty simple. By lowering interest rates, it becomes cheaper to borrow money and less lucrative to save. Encouraging individuals and corporations to spend. So as interest rates are lowered, savings decline, more money is borrowed, and more money is spent. Moreover, as borrowing increases, the total supply of money in the economy increases. So the end result of lowering interest rates <clears throat> is fewer savings. I think you guys are seeing that in your accounts. Fewer savings, more money supply. This is something we're also seeing. More spending. This is something we're not seeing. And higher overall economic activity that, again, we are not seeing. A good side effect. Well, since we're not seeing things, I'm going to say these these are a a bad a bad side effect. Uh, so let me take a look at another article here. 
forward guidance. What is forward guidance? And, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because we always hear these FOMC meetings. What we're hearing is forward guidance. Forward guidance refers to the communication from a central bank about the state of the economy and likely future course of monetary policy. It is the verbal assurance from a country's central bank to the public about its intended monetary policy. Again, it's a fed octopus putting out a tentacle, trying to nudge you to do some things. They're going to tell you, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. So you can go ahead and do this and you can go ahead and, and do that. In other words, they're trying to manipulate everything to do what it needs or what it wants us to do. The forward guidance attempts to influence the financial decisions of households, businesses, and investors by providing a guidepost for the expected path of interest rates to the extent that the central bank can influence those rates. Every time you see influence, think manipulate. The central bank's clear messages to the public are one, two, four, for preventing surprises that might disrupt the markets and cause significant fluctuations in asset prices. Forward guidance is a key tool of the Federal Reserve in the U.S. Other central banks, such as Bank of England, European Central Bank, Bank of Japan, they all use it as well. So the thing is, they do this thing called forward guidance. And from the BIS, how does it really... um? respond to these these types of news when we hear things like the forward guidance the zero lower bound forward guidance and how markets respond to the news short-term market interest rates seem to have been less responsive to economic news in post-crisis period meaning we are not doing what they want us to do we evaluate two potential reasons forward guidance and the constraint on monetary policy imposed by the zero lower bound, ZLB. We quantify how the ZLB has dampened market reactions to news in the U.S. using estimates of the probability of hitting the ZLB derived from overnight index swap rates uh, for short maturities. Okay, let me let me go down a bit. That one gets a bit uh, technical. I just want us to all be able to uh, to get the big picture. Many central banks have used forward guidance in recent years, and we see that right. We all sit at the edge of the chair. We listen to Jerome Powell or, or other central bank influencers and they influence interest rate expectations, particularly when rates are at the effective or zero lower bound or close to it. Forward guidance is also seen as a useful tool for promoting a smooth adjustment when central banks are seeking to return policy rates to normal levels. See that? When central banks are seeking to return policy rates to normal levels, that can only be if we are not at normal levels. And if we are not at normal levels, you guys already know from 2007, 2008, things have never been fixed. We've never gotten back to, to normal. Never, ever have we got back to normal, which is all the more reason why we have to be our own bank, which is why a lot of us are buying things like silver and gold. Beyond clarifying the central bank's policy reaction function, forward guidance might cause market interest rates to be less sensitive to economic news if market participants take it as a firm commitment to follow a certain policy path. The influencers, maybe we should just call central banks the influencers, right? I mean, they're, they just seem like YouTube guys who are trying to influence people. Anyway, if rates are already at or close to zero, measuring this effect is a challenge. Market interest rates could be less responsive to news simply because monetary policy is controlled by the ZLB. Okay, I think I can um I think I can end that part there. And really, the whole problem is is this the flaw with the Fed's forward guidance is it doesn't know what it's going to do jerome powell's legacy could very well be live by the word die by the word and i'd have to agree we're seeing this more and more i think a lot of you would would agree with that as well federal reserves apparent about face about face to the rear march on the outlook for interest rates has put the central bank in an awkward position of having to defend against accusations of caving to political or financial 
market pressure, uh, relevant timeline. So this timeline kind of goes through all these things that, that Powell said. We're a long way from neutral. Remain just below. Some further gradual increases. No present path for policy. We'll be patient. He's giving all these words as uh, influential or, or hoping to for them to have an influential impact on, on the markets, on, for businesses, for you and me. And um, let's see, it's a rather dramatic shift in less than four months, especially when estimates of the neutral rate tend to change at a glacial pace and only after reams of academic research on the project. It, Fed's a bit too slow. Um, so I want to go down to, to this one part where, um, where former Fed head from Dallas, uh, Stephen Fisher, he had something pretty interesting to say, and, and I hope I haven't passed it yet. Uh, okay, me, maybe I did. Um, hang on, let me, let me back up, see if I can, if I can find it again. Um, Okay, so speaking at a conference in Hong Kong, this was back in September 2013, Fisher, former head of the Dallas Fed, said he had reservations about central banks providing more and more information about what they plan to do. For starters, it removes the central bank's flexibility. More importantly, it is a strategy destined, destined to fail. This is coming from Fed head Fisher over in Dallas. He says you cannot... Expect the Fed to spell out what it's going to do because it doesn't know. So can the Fed return to what it was meant to be? Lender of last resort, maximum employment, price stability. Let me show you something Greenspan said in the Fed's 100-year anniversary interview. I'll, I'll show you that after I go through some of these, these comments here. I know you guys have been pretty active. Um, HSBC, I've been hearing they're in trouble. I think all of you folks have been, been hearing that they're in a bit of trouble. Uh, we all slave to central banks without sound money. I'd have to agree. I'd have to agree. I'd have to agree. Uh, let's see. Um, ride the curve. It was a street vendor in Lib. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Let me just get a bit of water. I think the comment. It's, I'd have to agree. Okay. Um, diversification of assets is the only sound money resources. Dances reluctantly. I have to agree with that. Uh, let's see what happened. What's going to happen to personal debt, car notes or credit cards? That's a good question, Harvey. Um, that is a good question. Maybe even the golden question, what's going to happen to all of these things as, as we move forward? Hard to say. Really, really hard to say. Um, okay. What I want to get into is, is something that uh, Greenspan had said. And um, this is also in that series of interviews conducted by the Fed. Hang on, let me copy this again. Okay, so if you want to see his full interview, that's that's the link. Uh, Alan Greenspan says, or he's asked by Mr. Hamley, the interviewer, he said the Fed has a lot of operational independence within the authorities that it's been given to make decisions, but it also is subject to the law that we call the dual mandate or the triple mandate, which we've been talking about. And that also in some sense is something of a constraint on the discretion of the fed alan greenspan this is what he has to say the federal reserve when i belong to the federal open market committee operated implicitly on the concept not of a dual mandate but interpreting the humphrey hawkins act which we took a look at which essentially stipulated that a necessity or necessary condition for long-term steady employment growth was low inflation or non-inflation. So within our interpretation of the law, okay, so within our interpretation of the law, we did not have a dual mandate. We did not have a dual mandate. You can stipulate in law things that economic policy ought to do, but if the law violates the laws of economies, 
it'll lose. It'll lose. So that's some um that's some pretty strong words from from Greenspan. You can stipulate in law that the things that economic policy ought to do, but if the law violates the laws of economics, it'll lose. So um Alan Greenspan, some pretty strong words. Pretty, pretty strong words. Kind of says a lot about the Fed. They are an independent body. They they are not uh an entity of the government, I guess I could say that they they're not a government uh, institution. Privately, I mean they're they're entirely on their own, totally private. Um, so again, it's interesting that that he he says that. And when he was asked the question about negative rates, this is what he had to say. Uh, to Sarah's question, and others have pointed this out as well. Given negative rates around the globe on what over sixteen trillion in assets. Do you think it could actually visit our shores as well? Uh, well, it's hardly likely that it's been, you know, for example, take a look at Japan. You can see it, you know, quite visually as the, as the population goes down. And you can see it pretty much uh, throughout the world. It's just a matter of time before it's more in the United States. It's just a matter of time. <clears throat> We all got that, right? It's just a matter of time. And again, it's happening all over the world. Um, it's probably just a matter of time. And I want to show you something that Fisher, another Fed head, Fed head from Dallas anyway, what he had to say. Fisher's remarks, that I tell you, this was recently. I think it was. It came from last week. What he had to say, you know, he um very open, very candid, and there's some truth in what former Fed head from Dallas Fisher had to say. The question is, what will it do for real operating businesses that are the job makers and creators in America? So that's one question. Is, there, is it worth moving on Fed funds again when rates have come down across the yield curve and the cost of business borrowing and access to credit is still very high and, in fact, has improved? And then the second thing that one has to consider is. Does the Fed want to have a foot every time the market gets nervous? And as he pointed out earlier, Lisa pointed out, uh, we're that coming off all-time highs. Does that make sense for the Fed to bail the markets out every single time, and then it creates a trap? How can you how can you bail them out every time to use your words, and then not bail them out to use that those words again when the markets may need it most? Well, a question, need it most, coming off of all time high. So it's just a question I have. I mean, here's the rule, the basic rule, as you know, if you're in a hole, stop digging. The Fed has created this dependency, and there's an entire generation, as you know, and I go to these meetings with all these money managers, an entire generation of managers that weren't around in 74, 87, the end of the 90s, and certainly weren't around even in 2007, 2008, 2009. So they have only seen a one-way street. Of course they're nervous. question is, do you want to feed that hunger, keep applying the opioid of cheap and abundant money? Money's already cheap and abundant. It's there. Yeah, but, but if, if... But if, but if, but if... Sorry, CNBC guy, but you, you sound like a, a four-year-old. But you promised, but you promised, but you promised. Well, it just doesn't work like that. But if, 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 does the Fed continue to manipulate the market? And realistically, if we drive on a flat tire, I mean, are we going to just drive on a flat tire until we're, we're on all rims? You know, is that what we're, 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 we're headed to? He used the word trap. That I found interesting. He used the word trap. If so... Where do we, where do we go from from here? He used that word trap. So I'm curious. I want to know what you guys think. Is the Fed trapped? Um, I I think they are. You know, they no matter what move they make, long term implications are. I don't think there. I don't think there's anything good long term. Um. Anyway, let's see what you guys have to think about that. Um. Woodchuck trucking, be patient. Don't be fooled by this metals bounce. More downside to come than off to the races. You know, it could be. You know, we uh, again, we've seen that in 2007, 2008. So can't discredit that. Woodchuck, you know, good point. Good point. Butchie Harding. My grandfather was in the Air Force, fought in Korea. 
props to your grandfather. Respect that. Uh, back in the 80s, he talked about all the millions he was leaving behind, all gone. Graham is living on peanuts. They won't change with, with the times. Well, you know, I mean, I, I think as we get older, you know, we, we do tend to get set or set old in our ways. And a lot of times it's because these things work for us. Uh, but today, you know, a lot of times um, th these things, it's, it's just not the same. It's moving somewhere. Don't know where, moving somewhere, whether it's going to be good or bad. Have yet to, I think we all have yet to see that. But, you know, I think we're all in agreement that the monetary system is going to change. The current monetary system we're in, it's not going to make it. It's going to become something else. And we've talked about things like central bank, digital currencies. We've talked about all these other things. It's going to change into something else. And, and again, the gold and silver is going to help you get through that transition of where we are to where we're going. we got to get across that bridge. And it's just my belief, my opinion. It's not advice, not financial advice or anything. My belief, my opinion, this is where gold and silver is going to be that bridge. It's going to be that bridge for, for you to cross, for your assets to cross, for your wealth to cross. So, you know, if you don't know too much about gold and silver, just know that it's more than the everyday up and down spot price. There's a whole lot more to it than just that. So just try and, and dig a little, scratch the surface a little, you're going to find a lot of information on why people buy into these assets. And probably number one thing, it's a store of value. Over time, it's a store of value. It's even gotten to a point where a lot of us already start to label it money insurance. This is an insurance of sorts for when this fiat fantasy starts to, uh, starts to, to crumble. Um, it's going to be there for you. It'll definitely be there for you. Um, Okay, so let's see. What do you guys think about what, what Fisher what Fisher said? You know, he again, he used the word trap. Um, I know a few weeks back I, I've used the word liquidity trap. Um, the Fed's printing money, but it's just not going anywhere. And that liquidity seems to be trapped. So it's it's just not going anywhere. And they're continuing to, to print. Um, you know, repo markets, they're, they're trying to taper down the repo markets. We, we see a lot of oversubscriptions now. So I think, you know, I mean, for some reason, the best market ever, we're, we're, seeing, <laughs> we're seeing a very fragile market for it being the best market ever. And I think if we're going to call a spade a spade, it's an election year. And, um, you know, as Trump has mentioned before, the economy is everything. And, uh, you know, that economy needs to stay up uh, during an election year. But, of course, for you and me, economy needs to, to do well. And um, it's, it's just that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an election year. And, and so, you know, it, it, economy is very, very fragile. It, economy counts for votes. So economy does well. You get the votes you want. Economy doesn't do well. Those votes start to move around a bit. So, again, something to keep in mind. Uh, just my opinion. Um, okay, so, you know, that was something that uh, Fisher had to say. And, and I want to go back to one more thing that, that Greenspan had to say. I mean, I heard you, I saw a headline that, that you were talking about the idea of negative interest rates potentially happening in this country do you think that's something possible and if so what would it signify well first of all what it signifies really is that the world population is aging and that people are recognizing that they're dying off at a much later date than they originally contemplated when they started to save and as a result of that uh, there's been an endeavor to pick up fairly quickly. Like the U.S. Treasury 30-year yield uh, uh, is a ter terrifically useful, uh, I would say, uh, offset to the other things that are going on in the market. It's, it's a real-time asset. And the reason, one of the reasons that gold price 
is rising as fast as it is, you know, at $1,500 a troy an ounce. Uh, that's telling us essentially that people are looking for hard, basically, uh, r resources which they know are going to have a value 20 years from now or 30 years from now as they age and they want to make sure that they have the resources to keep themselves in place. That is a clearly fundamental force that's driving this, but we don't know how far it'll go. That's the reason why gold and silver will bounce back. Forward guidance is a tool along with NERP, ZERP, and things they have yet to cook up and implement, like MMT and, of course, helicopter money, which we, we just talked about. MMT, be on alert for that, especially election year. Pandering is going to come around. And, um, hey, just be careful of this MMT helicopter money, which we already see in places like a main financial hub of all places, Hong Kong. There's only one way to implement monetary policy and and Realistically, let's be clear on, on what it is because we're not doing what they want us to, to do. Only way to implement monetary policy is, is coming to a point where in, in a low to zero or even negative rate environment is by, I hate to say it, controlling you and me. They want us to spend. They want us to save. They, they're going to control us. Um, they're going to influence us. Just, just know that, uh, or just be aware that um, things aren't going how they want it to go. So they're going to need us to, to um, do the work for them. Um, and for that to happen, the Fed and central banks, they're going to become a creature unto itself. And they're a Fed octopus. What other creature can, can they become? Um, pretty much they're beholden to no one. They are supposed to be beholden to you and I, looking out for our best interests. Um, but they're going to become beholden to no one, to no one, and in some aspects regarding this new creature that they might become. Well, they already are. I mean, they already are that fed octopus. What else are they going to become from there? Kind of a scary thought, but that's where again, you know, we got to take care of ourselves. We got to take care of each other. You got, in some ways, be your own, be your own central bank. Um, you have to understand the importance of hard liquid assets, um, the importance of what money is. And, um, you know, again, try not to get caught up too much in the, the everyday movement, the up and down, because whatever it is today, two weeks from now, it's really not going to matter to you, whatever it was today. So the price part, I mean, sure, everybody wants to get in and, and buy it low, Maybe later on at some point they want to sell high. I mean, sure, of course, you everybody wants to do that. But the thing is, along the way, you're having probably the best store of wealth. You're having some type of an insurance against anything that, that might go down as far as um, financial anyway or the monetary system. So, you know, you, you got so much riding with you when you get into gold and silver. And, and here's the thing. You get into it and, and let's say, you know, you, okay, you, you don't agree, you know, the sky hasn't fallen, seems like they're going to go on and on and on and, okay, maybe I'll, I'll get out of my position. Well, it's so liquid enough that you can get out of your position. And again, even with companies like us, you can hang on to your position, but go ahead and use what you have as, as collateral. So, you know, it, it's almost... um. You know, speculation-wise, making money, you know, that that's one side of it. The other side of it is, is of course, protecting what, what you made. And, and this, protecting what you have. And this essentially is what silver and gold does. And for the people that understand that, they get it. Of course, they would like to see the, the asset rise. But I know one thing, all you guys out there, if you see that price rise, you're going to hope it came back down so you can buy more. Um, at least I know, at least I know why I'm that way. So let me look at a few more questions and I'll, I'll head out. Um, let's see where, where we're at. Uh, SCTPC, first time I've seen you here. Welcome aboard. Who cares about price? I'm still up 50,000 or 70,000, but 
but I'm happy. Okay, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. JW, long haul savings, but whenever you can, over time, the dollar cost average is low overall, and the long term payout is great. Yeah, you know that that's a good point. I mean, the the dollar cost average. Maybe you you bought you bought a coin at twenty five bought a coin at 20 you average that out you know where you at 22 50 so you know sometimes if, if you bought a bit too high and you see the price drop and you think to yourself oh geez what a terrible investment my investment's going downhill no a lot of times the strategy is you you pick up some more when the price is low and then the average cost of what you're buying it at comes down so you know there is some uh a method to the madness, right? As as they say. Okay, so let's see. Two more questions. Uh, they're going to issue debt. Yeah, woodchuck trucking. They're going to issue debt. Nothing stopping them from that. It's it's already happening anyway. So, true, true there. Uh, let's see. W winging it, Tracy. Trump and the Fed can print money out of thin air, but they can't print a supply line. You know, and that that's the point. And I think this is what we're going to see in the next few weeks where um, central banks, they are on the phone. They are talking to each other. We, we showed that last week where, you know, they're meeting here, meeting there. Um, you know, the thing is, even if they throw money at this, what's it going to do for the supply chain? It can't really do anything for, for the supply chain. So, you know, unless it becomes something like what they're doing in, in Hong Kong and I think even what they're going to do in, in Italy where... They're just going to give money. They're going to throw money at people and try and get you through. And it may, it may not, but what does it do for supplies? I mean, you know, you can have a whole bunch of money, but if, if there's no bag of rice to buy, what, what's it going to do for you? Right. So, you know, you, you got to, um, again, just, just take care of yourself. And, you know, if the central banks, they go and print all this money, could run into that danger of, uh, that inflation, the inflation they're trying to get, they just might get it and they just might even uh, go past it and on into hyper inflation. And again, for those reasons, <laughs> you you want to be having some silver and, and gold. Uh, you want to be having it with you. And depending on where you're at in the world, you may also want to keep some outside where you're at, out of your jurisdiction and, and you know, safe place where in case things go bad in country a country b may be safer and your assets are safer so like they say diversify your assets but alongside with that diversify the location of your assets this is what i hear all the time all the time i, I hear this from guys who, who are doing very very well i'm sharing with you what what i hear um, everybody has their own opinion on it Okay, a couple more questions and, and that's it. RR, they can't print commodities from thin air. No, they can't. They can't do that. Uh, Fossilman 2, first time I've seen you here also. Welcome aboard. Bought at 350 when I was young. It's been my insurance policy ever since. 350 My man, that is, that's awesome. That's pretty darn awesome. I, I Gotta clap my hands for that one. 350. Good job. Good job. Good job, my man. Take care of it. Take care of it. And all of you, take care of yourself. You know, again, we're all in this boat together. We're gonna get through it. We don't need to panic. We're already on the right road. We most of us we already can see pretty clearly what's going on. So just go about doing the things you need to do. And don't forget to enjoy enjoy life be happy wife kids dog whatever it may be you got to enjoy yourself you know take the time to be happy and and realize you know don't forget to turn around take a look take a look at everything you have whether it's silver gold wife children house land business car whatever it is you have things you have things that that's going to be there for you if, if things should should uh, go bad but you got to take care of your health also. So you take care of that. When you take care of yourself, you're taking care of everyone and everything around you. So don't get too caught up in the frenzy. Um, do what you can. Um, from this side of the world, supply chain is fine. Um, 
stores shelves are still stocked uh, everything's good and as you know singapore was one of the first that went through it and um, the population density here it, it is pretty tight and um, for the most part it seems to be um as of now anyway it, it seems to be i, I don't want to say slowing down but you know it, it's seems to be controlled you know i mean it's there's no outbreaks you know real outbreaks here there here there are clusters going on everywhere so thing is you can get through it you will get through it um i hope it stays this way that, that eventually it's, it's it's gone but you will get through it you know it's not that um it's not that end of the world type of a thing you're going to get through it so just get what you can when you can enjoy yourself enjoy your family um don't let that fit octopus grab you. Uh, you know what it's doing already. So just just be wary. Um, understand it all. And, and even though at times he may be really kind of antsy inside, keep that smile on for the people around you. Because you know, they're, they're going to look at you to be their strength. So you remember that also. You know, try not to show that weakness or overly concern be that rock you know try to be that rock for for your family and and for your friends and if you can do that that's also going to help to to calm the fear down be that rock if you can so um with, with that rr stay the course don't be afraid prepare yourselves mentally physically and spiritually that yep i'm gonna have to we're gonna have to give that one to greg hunter he he always says that but it's true something you got to do so with that you know, you guys take care, take care of each other, um, stay safe, and as always, you know, saddle up for what's coming ahead and silver up. I'll see you guys next week. God bless and take care. Aloha.